JP Morosi, we are moving up in the world. Top of the hour, it's us. That's prime time, my friend. Good morning. How are I you? Love it. How about that, Lauren? The, the network, uh -huh. at least for this small yeah, the interval what they of want. time, belongs to us. <laughs> That's right. Let's take full advantage. Hey, we got action on a Tuesday during the show. Matt is thrilled, by the way, about the timing, JP. Justin Turner to Toronto, one year, $13 million. They wanted to cut down on the swing and miss. How does he help them there? Yes, and I'll, I'll be sure to get back to Matt as well, Lauren, if there's going to be a press conference sometime between 11 He's and 1. He's not interested. I'll, I'll be He'll sure be to long let you gone. Know. Oh, Maddie, can I let you know about that, please, at some point? No, I digress. Justin Turner to the Toronto Blue Jays. One year, $13 million as a base salary, $1.5 million in roster and performance bonuses. As you point out, Lauren, the key thing here is a low strikeout rate from Justin Turner. The Jays want more balls in play. They will have that with JT and likely to be their everyday DH, mixing in some starts at first and third base. Of course, that could impact Vlad Guerrero Jr.'s role and how they utilize Vlad going forward. But you look at the consistency, Lauren, that's what the Blue Jays want. The on base there in the mid threes, the slugging percentage in the mid fours. You can basically set your watch to this level of production for Justin Turner, and yes, he's a California guy, a longtime Dodger, but he got the flavor of the American League East last year at Fenway Park, and I do think that probably made him even more comfortable with the notion of joining the Blue Jays. Of course, they have added uh, Kiner Falefa, they brought back Kevin Kiermaier. We'll see if maybe one more addition to the pitching staff, but in general, it's a very, very solid staff, and we'll, we'll certainly Keep you posted as the week goes along if there is still some potential movement with Alec Manoa, although I believe that for now it looks like Manoa stays put in Toronto to begin 2024. Now, this also has ramifications for the rest of the free agent market. We talked a little bit earlier about Jorge Soler, J.D. Martinez. They're the, the DH types who are still out there. But how about Matt Chapman? He, of course, was a Blue Jay in recent years. And here's what I was told on Chapman earlier today and actually last night as well. The Cubs and Giants now are the top candidates to sign Matt Chapman. He was the Blue Jays' everyday third baseman each of the last couple of years. And I, I do think, Lauren, you think about the Chicago Cubs and whether it's Cody Bellinger or Matt Chapman, there is certainly a need and a desire on the part of the Cubs to bring in one more everyday bat and Matt Chapman, one of the best defensive infielders in the world. I will say that, in the world. Now, he had the great start to last great season. Start. His production tapered off a bit after that. But when you talk about uh, his representation, Scott Boris, uh, he also represents Cody Bellinger. A lot of conversation, I believe, Lauren, between the Boris camp and the Cubs about the potential of a fit. And let's not forget as well, he began his career in Oakland, playing for manager Bob Melvin, who's now the manager of the San Francisco Giants. Oh, we are getting somewhere, and that's all we can ask for. I love that we're starting with two 39-year-olds and Justin Turner and Max Scherzer because the guys were breaking down the Rangers' rotation earlier. And, of course, the question marks are with Jacob deGrom and Max Scherzer. Any timetable on Scherzer? Do we know anything? Well, we do know a little bit more, courtesy of noted baseball insider Jacob deGrom over the weekend at Rangers Fan Fest, who said publicly he that say. he believes, well, Jacob deGrom says, hey, both of us, meaning he and Max, are probably going to return around the middle of the year. Very good news for the Texas Rangers, effectively, as Jacob described it, as if they were both trade deadline acquisitions. So we know with Jacob, it was arm surgery. With Max, it was a lower back issue that he's coming back from. So this is the way that the Rangers rotation looks today. Evaldi Gray, Heaney, Dunning, Bradford, with potential contributions from Rodriguez and White. And then you see DeGrom, Scherzer, and Malley. Malley is more of a potential later season, if then, addition. But again, Jacob DeGrom and Max Scherzer, I love Jacob helping us out here, giving us a little bit more of a specific timetable. Around the middle of the year, they expect to rejoin the rotation 
of the reigning World Series <laughs> champ. So we talk about Houston, of course, they bring in Josh Hader and how good their rotation is. Of course, you've got the Verlander versus Scherzer dynamic, which is certainly a great storyline to see unfold in the American League West. But I, I think that to me is going to define, Lauren, the first half of the year for Texas. Can you stay close enough? It, that may sound funny given that you're the reigning World Series champs, but stay close to Houston and then say, you know what, once we get all of our guys back in the second half of the year, then we'll make up a ton of ground. And that might sound like the strategy for Bruce Bochy and Jacob DeGrom and Max Scherzer question. in 2024. Yeah, valid question in that division. Aside from the staff, though, JP, we hear Brandon Belt is on their mind. What does that mean? How much interest are we talking? Well, there is interest because at the moment, and again, Lauren, this is now my second Florida Gators reference of the show, Wyatt Langford is likely to make a contribution, but do you want to maybe build in some certainty of, of perhaps having Brandon Belt go to Texas and be a fit for his longtime manager and Bruce Bochy to begin the year and therefore give Wyatt Langford, if he needs a little bit of seasoning still in the minor leagues, to maybe ease him into that major league role at some point in time in the season. And that would potentially be Brandon Belt's role as the everyday DH to begin the year. He had a really good year, I thought with Toronto a year ago, and how ironic that we're talking about it, that basically it, Turner is replacing the role that Brandon Belt had last year with the Blue Jays. Maybe he'll play a little bit more uh, in the field, Turner will, than what Belt did a year ago, but Belt had a solid OPS plus, well above 100 in, with the Blue Jays last year. There was a, a bit of an injury that he missed just some time to, but I think for Brandon Belt, Cubs and Rangers, both really good fits for Brandon Belt. And at the end of the day, it's that comfort level of his first manager in the major leagues. I'll never forget it. He arrives in the major leagues at Dodger Stadium with the reigning World Series champion Giants back in 2011 with Bruce Bochy and Mark DeRosa on that team. About 13 years ago, Brandon Belt arrived in the major leagues. And what a career it's been for him since. Hey, we all love Kike Hernandez. So does every single teammate he's ever had ever lights up every clubhouse. What coast will that clubhouse be on, that new clubhouse? Or maybe it's not new. LA. Well, it could be familiar. Yes, exactly, okay. Lorna. Credit to Ken Rosenthal for the report there on the Angels having interest in Kike Hernandez. It is that positional versatility. Now, we'll see, of course, uh, does Kike still have a desire to, to play for the Dodgers at the end of the day? We'll see if that ends up being a possibility. But Ken's report was that the Angels have interest in Kike Hernandez. And even though they made another addition that the Angels did that we'll talk about in a moment, there is still, I think, a fit for Kike Kike as a multi-position, uh, good bat-to-ball skills. You look at that career resume for Kike Hernandez. Ten major league seasons. He's been able to be a center fielder. He's been able to be an infielder. Uh, it's starting up the middle. I think Kike does fit very well with the Angels. I would describe him, Lauren, as a Ron Washington type of player. And so perhaps he finds his way to Orange County in 2024. Aaron Hicks found a home in Anaheim. That's what aren't sure. One year. Where is he playing? They got a center fielder. You know that, JP, right? Well, and that's, to me, one of the most interesting parts of this deal. First of all, credit to Aaron Hicks. Released by the Yankees. Look at that catch he made for the Baltimore Orioles. He, he was showed so he still good has a there. lot. Oh, he was. A lot left in the tank for Aaron Hicks. He was there in the playoffs having a huge role. So I would say this. It's a great pickup for the Angels right around the major league minimum. There you see the difference in his production. Look, an OPS above 800, Lauren. I love it. He goes back there. He's got some roots in California. I think it's a great fit for him to go to the Angels. But you ask the question, will he play center field? Right now, Perry Manazian said yesterday publicly, Mike Trout, number 27. He's our center fielder. So it's going to be likely a corner outfield type role for Aaron Hicks because this guy can still go out and get it. I know he's had some injuries in recent years, uh, but we saw what he did for Team USA, the World Baseball Classic. I, I think for him, it's probably going to be a solid offseason of work getting him ready for the year ahead. And I, I really believe we can expect a big year from Mike Trout, not just a big year in the batter's box, but playing center field, going and getting it for the Angels there in OC in 2024. An, uh, do you say OC? 
Yeah. Orange County. <laughs> Don't ever say I mean, that again. Now, Lord, now, Lord, now, Lord I, I may have watched that show <laughs> once or twice, but but listen, I, I've watched one scripted show in the last. You like, watched now, the I, OC. I gotta, with Chris, I, I, no, you did times, not. A couple times I watched. It was like 10, 15 years ago. By the way, Lauren, the the only show I've watched in the last three years, Ted Lasso, because like there's a little bit of lasso positivity here. I would say. What about that's MLB about Central or Hot Stove? I mean, mix a little MLB Network one time. JP Morosi, a great day's work out of you. Thanks so much for the time, Thank Matt. You. He broke news, and it was before 1 p.m. Are you so happy? Yeah, I'm happy about that. I'm also happy that he copped to the fact that he watched uh, The Hills because I did too. Thank you, Maddie. Yeah. I was talking scripted television. Yeah. I watch this network all the time, but I, scripted I, shows. I, hey, put Lauren Conrad on the show and I'll watch it. Easy. <laughs>